Welcome back to the New York Jets franchise, everyone. This final week of the regular season has the Jets playing the Seattle Seahawks away from the familiar surroundings of MetLife Stadium. With a win here today, New York will solidify their hold on home field advantage in the playoffs. However, with a loss and a Patriot win, the best they can do is a wild card spot. Seattle has a problem as well. They must win. Because if the Cardinals win, the Seahawks need this win to take the NFC crown. Although Seattle has had a real tough season, currently at 7-8, and eight, I'm sure they would want nothing more than to keep playing into the postseason. With Russell Wilson leading the flight path of the Seahawks, and talent like Chris Carson, superstar Tyler Lockett, and DK Metcalf, he should be able to push the ball downfield. It remains to be seen how effective this number one defense will be against those guys. The defense for the Seahawks will be without their superstar X-Factor middle linebacker Bobby Wagner. That may give just a little escape for the passing game of the Jets, it just depends on whether Donald is on his game today. Let's find out as the Seahawks try to take down the high-flying Jets on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Quinn Jordan is back in the end zone for the Seahawks. Trent Lyon gets us underway here in Seattle. And a knee is taken and out to the 25-yard line. It will come. Russell Wilson, 10 interceptions, 29 touchdowns this season, and almost 3,500 yards. He's having a good season and would like to end on a high note if he can possibly get this ball out, and it is incomplete. Trying to push the ball down the field the first play. Now again... He tries to push the ball down the field and it is also incomplete. Third and 10. Standing tall in the pocket, completes this one to arguably his favorite receiver, Tyler Lockett. And that is a first down. Ja'Kai Polite takes down Jordan Howard in the backfield for a two yard loss. So second and 12. Out of the shotgun, firing complete on the right side, and Lockett has the first down. Out to the 48-yard line, and that incompletion is just due to lots of pressure being put on Wilson at the moment. Third and 11, receivers covered, and down goes Wilson. Raymond Rivers gets the pressure on him and makes the sack back at the 40-yard line. That gives the ball to the Jets. Sam Darnold is having an interception problem this season. That hasn't stopped the Jets from being in first place in the AFC. And this one is complete out to the 34. Second and inches. This one given up the middle to Jackson, has room, makes a fake, and is to the 48-yard line. Kalen Saunders down on the field, and he is taken to the sideline. Looks to be okay. Second and 10. Darnold drifting right, throws complete. Howard catches it, and he runs down to the 29-yard line. A gain of 23 yards. And that puts the Jets in excellent field position. Up the middle goes Jackson, and he is stopped at the 21-yard line. Second and three. Out to the right side, getting the first down to the 17, which puts the Jets in the red zone. And almost taken down in the backfield, Jackson Makes a break for it and all is all the way down to the four yard line. Jacobs heads left and he is stopped at the two. 
third and goal. And Darnold drifting, running, and he drags Robert Kandichi into the end zone. I believe that is his first rushing touchdown of the season. I can hardly believe that he hung on to that football, but the result was excellent. As he crosses the end line for the Jets score, and it is seven to nothing. Wilson from the 26, out of the shotgun, passes, almost intercepted, knocked away by Marcus May. Third and nine. And Wilson goes down in the arms of Demarcus Faulkner. An eight yard loss back to the 18 and that brings up fourth down. The Jets now in excellent field position at the 42. Herndon across the middle catches it down to the 44 yard line of the Seahawks. Jackson. Out to the left, takes it inside the 40 to the 37, and that brings us to the end of the first quarter with your score, seven to nothing Jets. Up the middle goes Jackson. Did they give him enough for the first down? No. Third and in inches. And Wesco takes it the rest of the way down to the 31 for the Jet first down. All alone in the backfield, Darnold throws complete. Herndon catches it down to the 23 yard line. And this drive is going much like the last one. And that one is a first down to Herndon on the perimeter. Now second and 12, Jackson down to the 10 yard line. Give him the nine and a first down. Second and goal from the 16 after a, a false start. And that one is incomplete intended for Jordan Thomas. Third and goal thrown up. Oh, that was very close to being intercepted. And Darnold should never have thrown that ball. And Lyon pulls it. The field goal is no good and the score remains seven to nothing. Now from the 23 yard line, out of the shotgun. Howard is given the football and he makes it out to the 29. Now third and five. The pass is complete to Lockett. Ramirez tackled him but not before Lockett got the first down. So second in four, Wilson under pressure goes down again in the arms of Demarcus Faulkner. His second sack on the day, back at the 33 yard line. Third and 11, Wilson steps up, delivers the ball and that is complete. James Washington takes it to the 47 yard line and that is the two minute warning. Out of the shotgun. Wilson complete to Washington again on the left side to the 41. And now the Seahawks are in the hurry up offense. That incomplete intended for DK Metcalf. Pass out to Tyler Croft in the flat. And he takes it to the 37. Third and five. The pass complete. Oh no, it's dropped. Washington couldn't hang on to it. He was popped pretty hard by Marcus May. So fourth and five, a 54 yard field goal. It's up. Oh, it hits the crossbar and back in the field of play. That is no good. That takes us to halftime. Your score, seven to nothing. And let's go to Eurocat Baby for a halftime update. Even without superstar middle linebacker Bobby Wagner, 
The Seahawks have been able to keep the Jets to only seven points on the board here at halftime. An interesting development coming out of Foxborough that may influence how the Jets approach the rest of this game is that Jacksonville has been able to defeat a very powerful Patriot squad. That means that New York could still lose this game with the Seahawks and hold on to the top spot in the AFC. What will the Jets coaching staff do? Put in all backups and risk losing this game or risk injury of a starter in the lineup and go for a sure win? Stay with us to find out because we'll be right back. Welcome back to CenturyLink Field. The Jets defense has done what it set out to do, and that was put pressure on Russell Wilson and stop up the run of the Seahawks. With only five yards on the ground, what will Seattle do to change things up a bit? And will New York change things up themselves and put in the backups for the rest of the game? Toby Ramsey is warming up on the sideline so i would only think that he may be coming in for the rest of the game and indeed he is the new quarterback for the jets odom in the backfield and ramsey is looking to pass it and completes this one to terry mclaurin to the 40 yard line for a first down for his very first throw in this game Second and 10, another throw, and this is complete to Valdez Scantling. Third and one, Wesco takes it up the middle and inside Seahawk territory to the 42. Out of the I formation. Odom takes it to the left and he is stopped at the 34. So third and two, Jackson is given the ball, looks to have the first down, and they're not gonna give it to him. They're gonna call it fourth and one. The Jets challenge the call, and let's take a look at this. And he's already down there, and he is on the ground there so not getting a very good look at this whatsoever but it looked from up here in the booth that he had the first down and they're not going to give it to him so out comes trent lyon the ruling on the field stands trent lyon on for a 50 yard field goal it's up on its way and it is no good short and i can't believe this forward progress should have given jackson the first down and lion doesn't make the for the field goal and the score remains seven to nothing second in 12. across the middle complete Washington to the 44 yard line. Now third and six. The pass is basically thrown away because the pressure was about to get to him. That gives Ramsey and the offense of the Jets the ball back. Odom takes it out to the left and he's out to the 20 yard line. Third and one. And Jacobs takes it for the first down to the 26. Odom alone in the backfield takes it out to the left again and it's the same result. An eight yard gain, third and two. Jackson up the middle and he has the first down. Now from the 39, second and 10, Odom. Takes it up the middle and he gets to the 48. Third and one. Wesco is met in the backfield. Ben Burr Curvin stops him before he can get anywhere and it's fourth and one. The punt drops just inside the field of play and it is downed at the three. 
And that is the end of the third quarter, which the Seahawks are going to be in a big hole. Now the pass is complete. Tyler Lockett catches it out at the 24 for a first down. This one is knocked down. Taj Little gets a big mitt on it. Wilson back to pass. Throws complete. Croft is all the way out to the 46. And a first down for the Seahawks. Second and eight. Here comes the rush and down goes Wilson in the arms of Ethan Goodman. He is one fast cornerback, ladies and gentlemen. The pass this time caught by Lockett and he's all the way down to the 24. That's a gain of 35 yards. The Seahawks are making a run. Back to pass, and it's complete to Howard, and he's out of bounds at the 18. Third and five. Tyler Croft out of bounds at the 15, and that is going to bring up fourth and one. The offense stays on the field, and it's incomplete. Schultz didn't turn around fast enough and the ball went whizzing by. He has to be disappointed with himself. After a jet three and out, the Seahawks have the ball back again. Complete over the middle. A wide open. Schultz goes all the way down to the 31. Pass complete to Washington on the left side to the 23. Seven yard pickup. Wilson throws it and it's intercepted. Lorenzo Carter makes his way all the way out to midfield. And that has to be a momentum killer for Seattle thinking that you're going to get some points and then all of a sudden oops interception so Ramsey from midfield connects with Valdez Scanling he's inside the 15 to the 14 and out of bounds just over two minutes left in the game a screen pass to Odom and he gets down to the eight Timeouts now be, being taken by the Seahawks. And did he get the first down? No, they did not give it to him. Third and one. Wesco gets the first, and it's first and goal inside the five with two minutes to go in the game. Ramsey throws, complete. Touchdown, Terry McLaurin. And that gives the Jets a two touchdown lead. And I'm still trying to fathom this because the Seahawks haven't put one point on the board yet. And we're inside the two minute warning. Wilson from the 25 throws complete. And that is a first down to Washington. Another throw. And how did DK Metcalf come down with that? At the 40-yard line. And that one was thrown up. Caught by Washington for first down. And this one is on the money. DK Metcalf touchdown Seattle. If you look at this right here on the replay, that was placed exactly where it needed to be in order for Metcalf to make the play. On side kick fielded by Johnson and that may do it. Ramsey on the field. 
A timeout left for Seattle, so no victory formation. And the first down by Odom. And he wants to score, and he is not going to get there. The final score is 14 to seven. And wow, what a finish. Because most of the game was very defensive and right there toward the end, we had an awful lot of scoring going on. Now, the backups kept a charging Seahawks team from taking the win away. Uh, I would say that they did better than just all right because they held the running attack to zero yards in the second half. And let's face it, there were some pretty spectacular catches in the last scoring drive by Seattle. Wilson was harassed all game long, and whether he was sacked or pressured to throw the ball early, the passing game just wasn't getting the job done on a consistent basis. If you noticed on the last drive, he was throwing up some jump balls and his receivers were making some out of this world catches. So that's why you see so many passing yards collected in the stats for the Seahawks. The offensive performance by the Jets wasn't stellar, but they seem to be taking the motto to heart that defense wins championships. Four tackles for loss and five sacks on Wilson, which made it real hard to get much going from a Seahawk perspective. Three of those sacks were made by Demarcus Faulkner, and if he'd been kept in the entire game, who knows what would have happened. He played well enough to earn the AFC Defensive Player of the Week award, not bad for only his second season in the NFL. Now that the regular season is over, we look forward to the playoffs. It was touch and go for a few games there, wondering whether or not the Jets would even make the playoffs, uh, but they've secured home field advantage throughout. The Pats, although they lost the last two games of the season, take the number two spot in the AFC rankings and number five seed due to the two ties on the record. It's the Ravens, Chargers, and Colts that take the other division crowns, and the Browns that finish out the AFC with the number six seed wild card spot. The NFC looks to be a totally different ballgame. The first two seeds in New Orleans and Chicago have better records than do the Jets, and even the number five seeded Falcons have a better record than the AFC's leader. We'll have to see if those records are indicative of the strength of the NFC versus the AFC come Super Bowl time. In the meantime, finishing out the NFC are the Cowboys that take the East and the Cardinals that take the West with a Week 17 win over the Vikings. Then you have the Lions that make the playoffs in the number six seeded wild card spot. Well, I'm kind of anxious to see how far they can make it because their playoff record isn't, uh, <laughs> well, it's not stellar. So this is how wild card weekend shapes up. The Browns head west to take on the Chargers. The Lions visit the Cowboys. The Patriots travel to Indy to take on the Colts. And the Cardinals host the 12-4 Falcons. And this is what happened in those games. The Browns hung 42 points on the Chargers to win big. The Lions once again went one and done, losing to the Cowboys by a point. The Colts avoided going home for good with a win over the Patriots by a field goal. And the Falcons will move on via a one-score win over the Cards. So that means that the division round looks like this. The Browns take on the Jets for the second time this season. 
Remember that the Jets won 31-14 in a Week 11 battle. The Saints invite Division foe Atlanta to the Superdome. The Colts travel to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. And the Cowboys invade Soldier Field to take on the Bears. Since the Jets won by 17 last time against the Browns, one might think that this was a sure win for the Jets. As Coach Corso would say, not so fast. The Browns have major talent on their team. Baker Mayfield not only has a formidable running attack led by Nick Chubb, known as a wrecking ball, but will access his passing weapons, Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry, and David Njoku. To say nothing about the strength of an O-line that has a lot of good talent on it. The defense has outstanding talent as well with players like Miles Garrett, Larry Ogunjobi, Joe Schobert, and Denzel Ward. The only place that may be an at-risk area for Cleveland are the safety positions that don't have just a lot of depth. We'll have to see if Donald can take advantage of any mismatches that could happen as a result of that risk area. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the New York Jets franchise here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Really, in the last four weeks, the defense has dominated giving this team a chance to win in each of those games. Will the same be true of this divisional game against the Browns? Since the reordering of the O-line, the offense has enjoyed a running game that has taken pressure off Sam Darnold, and that will have to happen in this game as well. If the Jets have a hard time establishing a strong rushing presence, so the offense will have a hard time putting points on the board. Can the Jets get it done? Be with us to find out when the Jets host the divisional round AFC playoff game against the Cleveland Browns. And until we see you then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now. And have a good day, everyone.